Okay, um, welcome to a video about playing a game to learn multiplication. This game is called Multiple Madness. I made it up when I was uh, teaching second grade. Now I teach fifth grade and we play this in fifth grade as well. Anybody who wants to learn multiplication uh, using readily available cards, um, it's a simple game. The rules are very simple. And so um, the emphasis is on the acquisition of the knowledge, not really on the complexity of the game. Um, and so with this game, you could start with an array of any shape or size. And the reason why you use an array is because when teaching multiplication, teachers are discussing arrays all the time. In this case, you got three rows uh, by five columns. And when you have three by five, you can ask the kid, what's the... Uh, uh, product, but what's the product of those two factors? Three times five, and you, of course, you get three times five is fifteen. So there's fifteen cards total. Great. So let's move on to the next thing. If I add another column, now I got three times six. Three times six is eighteen. Great. Let's keep going and skip counting. So if you got eighteen, eighteen plus three is twenty-one. So that's three times seven is twenty-one, and we can add another row here. And now we've got. Uh, 8 times 3 or 3 times 8, they're interchangeable. That's the commutative property. You can move them around like in a driving commute and it doesn't matter. The product will still be the same. Usually we don't do all this uh, discussion, but you can use the cards to create an array and make a, um, a multiplication problem that way for added practice. But the, when the game begins, this is how it goes. It's um, It could be, usually I start with a 5x5 five five array and then I expand upon that. Um, I could do a 6x6 six six array depending on how advanced the kids are and when you see they start struggling and not being able to do the problems anymore because there's too many multiples there or there's too many uh, factors in the multiple and the numbers get too high, the multiples get too high, then you can just reduce the array and make it smaller of course. Um, now the way this game works is we take turns and uh, when the first person goes they take a look at and see what cards there are there. I do not allow people to poke um, and count because uh, if the child makes a mistake, an opponent or the next person or anyone at the table gets to say steal. And uh, if a, a child names either the incorrect numbers of the multiple or they name the incorrect product, then another person at the table could, could say steal. But if the child gets it correct, they get to take the cards. So, say for example, I was player number one, and I was taking a look at it, and I noticed that there were threes. And the threes were, um, there were four of them. So I'd say three, I'd say the number of the card first, which is three, and I'd say the multiple, which is times four. So three times four is twelve. And everybody at the table would say check, or, you know, at least one person needs to verify. And so if it's a, if it's a check... It's nice to have two people verify because oftentimes the first person will say check and the second person will, might steal because the first the second person got it wrong as well. So in this case, it's three times four is twelve. Somebody verifies, yeah, take check. Okay, thank you. I get to take the cards, and it goes on to the next person's turn. I keep those cards in my stack. The dealer, whoever the dealer is, passes out another set. Now I don't adjust the deck at all. I just make sure that um um. Yeah, I want to make sure that the game is simple. So as a teacher, I will uh, mix my card decks. It doesn't matter. It's, to me, it's not about cards as a deck. Uh, it's about cards with numbers on them. So if any cards that have numbers on them, you could use Uno the same way. You could use any loose set of cards that um, happen to be sitting around to play this game. I like flexibility as a teacher, and that's one of the things I like to incorporate in my games is flexibility, simplicity, and uh, ease of acquisition of materials. So if we take a look, you can see there's a joker there, and people say, well, joker's obviously not a number, so we attribute the number 20 to jokers, and we attribute queens, kings, and jacks. We attribute the number 10 to all of those faces, the face cards. But the thing with that is they are not um, interchangeable. So if the second person decides they want to do queens, you can see there are three queens in the set. So the person would say, queen times 3 equals 30. Okay? Not, you wouldn't say, 10 times 3 equals 30, and I'm talking about the queens. You just say, queen times 3 equals 30. And then somebody verifies, two people verify, okay, check, check, good. 
then the second person gets their uh, queens. Okay. Um, now, dealer redeals. Now, the <coughs> object of this game is to get the most number of cards possible. The object of the game is not to have the highest value, because at the end of the game, what you don't want to do is you don't want to sit around uh, counting the value of the cards. You just want to be able to take the cards, stack them up, and see who has the highest stack. Because oftentimes when you're playing a game in the classroom, or even at home, you just don't want to bother adding. <laughs> You've already done all the multiplication, and that's the, 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 the purpose of this game is the multiplication aspect, not the... Um, uh, adding at the end and the labor of trying to figure out who wins. So it's a, what we do here is I see two jokers and I said jokers are equal to 20. So jokers times two or joker times two equals 40. Check, that's verified. Okay, so the third person gets to get the jokers. Dealer again passes out. And uh, now you see that there are no number ones, there are actually aces. So the fourth person calls out ace times three equals three and then somebody else anybody at the table at that point can steal because there aren't three aces there are how many aces four so steal ace times four equals four and then that person other people verify say yeah yeah you got it and so in this case uh, player number two stole so um, play does not continue with player two it continues where the the person that made the mistake is the next person's turn Okay, so now it is uh, player one's turn again, because, you know, player four made the mistake. So player one's turn, um, after the dealer deals, and I really don't care who deals. It could be player one, it could be anybody. So <clears throat> when I look at it, I could say, okay, um, in this case, there's three kings, there's three jacks, um, but the greatest multiple that I see on the table... Um, it's actually times three, I think. So I'm going to go king times... Oh, actually, there's four kings. King times four equals 40. Now, say, for example, the person starts reading king times, and then they change their mind. They can't do that. They have to start with whatever they start. is kind of like spelling bee rules. So if I say king times... Uh, oh, wait a second. No, actually, it's jack times. Okay, you're not really allowed to do that because it kind of uh, delays the game and you have to be committed to what you start saying. So, um, in that case, it was king times four and I went with that one. Okay, and you understand how the game works. You just keep going until the cards are all used up or until the bell rings and it's time to go out or until you're out of time, in which case what you want to do is just take the stacks of cards put them next to each other. So say for example, this is player one stack and this is player two stack and player three stack. Player four didn't even get any. So you just put them on the table, stack them up and see who's got the most cards and you just look at it from sideways and you say, oh, okay, player one had the most cards, he wins. That way there's no sitting around waiting to figure out who won. And it's just luck of the draw when the game is over sometimes if you're teaching and then the bell rings. But at home, you could just wait till all the cards are used up. I prefer to use two decks of cards for this game. Um, so uh, in conclusion, the strategy of this game is getting the most multiples possible, not having the highest value possible. So it doesn't benefit you getting all the jokers. Okay? It's just, you know, you get two jokers might be 40, but you only have two cards by the end of that. Okay, thank you for watching.